Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. And I'm going to be doing a tutorial here on how we can calculate rolling totals in SQL Server. Don't forget, if you are interested in videos on business intelligence, SQL programming, or data analysis, do subscribe to the channel, check out the other content on there. There is a, a lot of great videos. And if you do enjoy the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. We're going to go over to SQL Server Management Studio now and have a look at how we can calculate rolling totals. I've done quite a few videos on window functions now um, and they, they're proving quite popular because let's face it, uh, working with window functions is, is pretty cool. Um, and we're going to be looking at uh, window functions in this video. So we've done other videos on how to calculate running totals. Um, but let's say we have a scenario where we want to calculate a total for the last 30 days. Um, so that needs to be a rolling figure. So every, the window or the frame keeps moving every time we calculate that. So I've started off here, I've got a, a fact table joined to a date dimension. The fact table is quite small, just contains some sales data. So what we're going to take from this uh, initially is just our, our date and we're going to be working with our sales uh, amount just to keep this as, as simple as possible. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that into a temporary table for this example. So I'm just going to take the date and the sales amount. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to group by the date and then have a total sales amount figure that we're going to be working with. So I'm just going to drop a sum on the sales amount. I'll have to give that a, a name and I'll just keep that as sales amount for now. So I'll go ahead and execute that and then we'll just do a select all from a temporary table. Uh, it's called temp sales. So I'll go ahead and execute that query now. Uh, we'll just order by date just to make the results uh, a bit clearer. So we've got a total sales amount per day. Now let's imagine we are tasked with for every 10 days we want to calculate a, a rolling window so from the the first to the tenth then the second to the eleventh that's going to be our, our total amount that we're going to be working with um, so how are we going to start off we're going to again start off by looking at a windows function so what we want to do is sum and in this case we're going to be using our sales amount And again, we'll be opening uh, over clause. Now we're not gonna be using any partitioning here. So we don't need to actually partition the data by any other columns. So all we're going to be looking at is order by, and that's going to be date. Uh, and we'll give that uh, an alias as total. And we'll just select the other columns as well. So if I go ahead and execute that, as we've seen, when we calculate a running total, um, we just need to sum the value and then add in our over clause. So as we can see where I'm clicking the mouse here, we can see that, that each sales amount is being added to the previous figure every time we're running that. So how do we go about looking at a running, uh, sorry, a rolling total? Uh, so you can see I highlighted that in capitals uh, in the introduction to the video. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be changing our, our window or our frame. So we're going to be saying after our order by and then our column name in this case date, we're going to say rows between so initially what we'll do is to give you an overview is just write it out. So the this is going to be the equivalent of the query we've just ran. So if we write out unbounding proceeding, unbounded proceeding and current row, 
and I go ahead and execute that, we can see we still have the same results. So this unbounded proceeding, what that actually means is we're going to, however many rows there are before the current row, use those to calculate the running total. But we can actually put a, a value in here, so we can replace the unbounded keyword. And because we're looking at a rolling 10, we're probably going to be looking at the current row and nine preceding rows. So if I go ahead and just put the number nine in there and execute that now, we can see that we still have our total running as normal. So our sales amount still being added to our total uh, as we would expect. But then when we get down to the 11th row, things start to get interesting. So we can see there's 10, a value of 10K here. So if we had it as unbounded proceeding, we expect a value of about 83,000 here, maybe close to 84. But we can see that that is not where we are. So this is just including these rows here. And again, when we get to the 12th row, we're only looking at these column, these values here. So we can see there how our, our window or our frame is actually sliding along. That's how we can calculate a rolling total. So it's something I have to do quite often by different measures, so m by month or by date. Uh, so it's usually over some kind of date period that I have to calculate a rolling period and that's the information we want to look at. Maybe in terms of performance as well. Um, so maybe we've got some data on, let's say, university or college students and we want to see how they're performing over time. So again, we could have a look at rolling period for that. So if we wanted to snapshot, say, uh, every month, so we're currently in November, so if we wanted to look at the last three months, uh, we'd do the, the current total uh, and two preceding uh, to give us that rolling three months. And then if we went back to October, the October figures would include September and August as well. So the syntax for that is after the order by, we define our column and then we have rows. I believe we can just change that to row. Uh, no, we can't. So it has to be rows between an amount preceding. If it's unbounded, it will just be a running total and the current row. And then we're going to move on to, let's say, what if we wanted to look at rows in the future? So let's say starting at row one, we wanted to look at the next nine rows. So how we can do that is just to flip this query round. So again, we can have some sales amount. I'll write this out as a separate column. And again, we'll have the same order by, so same order by our column. We need rows between. And this time we're going to be starting at the current row. And then we're going to be saying and nine following. And we'll just call that forward. So if I go ahead and execute that query now, we can see that this is actually a value of the first 10 rows. As we can see, that matches there. And then the second row matches our 11th row in our total column as well. So that's how we can calculate rolling totals. Now that's just a very quick example. And as I say, it's something I have to run uh, Occasionally, it's something uh, it's part of the sort of data analysis that I do. Um, but have a play around with that and let me know what you think. Let me know if you come up to if you come up to any problems. Really hope you have enjoyed that video. Uh, just a quick example of how we can calculate rolling totals. I thought it was worth. Uh, producing a video on that as we have quite a lot on window functions. Um, we've done some on running totals, but it's important to know how to calculate rolling figures as well. 
Check out the other videos on my channel if you haven't already. There is a dedicated playlist to uh, window functions that covers a lot of different aspects of them. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.